Today for grammar, we are going to be having a look at speech marks. So how to use speech marks appropriately in our writing. Now, this is something you will have covered in previous years, but you might need a reminder on it. And I have noticed that some people are using it more than others in our writing. And we all want to be able to use speech with confidence. So there are two types of speech. There's reported speech and direct speech. And the one we're looking at today is called direct speech. So reported speech just talks about when somebody summarizes what someone has said. So for example, the goat said that they wanted to eat the green grass on the other side of the bridge. It doesn't say exactly the words that the goat said, but it gets the message across. So that's what reported speech is, but we're not worrying about that too much today. So we are going to be looking at direct speech direct speech. So when you have direct speech in a piece of writing, you have to use some really specific bits of punctuation um, to separate the, the speech from everything else that you write. And this um, helps the reader to understand what's going on with the characters. So the most important rule when you're punctuating direct speech is that all the words spoken have to be enclosed by things called inverted commas. So there are two ways of doing this. So in British English, it is okay to use a single inverted comma. So I'm just gonna show you on my keyboard where that button is, okay? So it's just there and you would just hold it down and it would put that in. So it's the same as we would use for an apostrophe. However, um, we would more often see a double speech mark, which is above the number two on my keyboard, though it might be somewhere else on yours. And to put that into typing, I would hold down the shift key and the, the inverted comma um, button at the same time and that would put it in rather than putting in a two. But if you are choosing to use, I would prefer you to use the double, um, but if for some reason you were using a single, you would need to make sure that was done throughout the piece of text. You couldn't chop and change halfway through, you have to pick one and stick with it. But I want you to focus on using the double for now because that's the more commonly seen one. So all commas, full stops, question marks and exclamation marks must be inside our speech marks. Okay, so in this, um, we've got single uh, inverted comma as our speech marks. So that grass looks delicious. You can see there's a comma just there, said the smallest billy goat gruff. Hey goat, exclamation mark, and then you close your speech marks, shouted the troll, you are not allowed to cross my bridge, and you'll see the full stop is before the speech mark. That's a really common mistake that people flip them around. How can we get to the other side? The question mark is before the speech mark. So see this one here, it's got get off my bridge, the speech marks are closed, and then it's got the exclamation mark. That is incorrect. Commas are another really important tool that we need to use when we are writing with direct speech in a text. So this rule is when the direct speech comes before or precedes a verb and doesn't end in a question mark or exclamation mark, a comma must be used. What this basically means is you cannot close your speech marks without a piece of punctuation first. So unless there was an exclamation mark or a question mark, because there's still more writing after the speech, we would put a comma rather than a full stop. So you can see that the sentence is not quite finished. We've not got anything else in there and we need to have some punctuation before our speech marks close. So in that case, we would put a comma because there's a little bit more to go in our sentence. Again here, those goats are always disturbing my sleep. There is no exclamation mark or question mark. So we have to put in our comma before we can close our speech marks. So really, really important to remember if our speech is not the end of our sentence, we need to use a comma if there's not already something there. Where the direct speech before a verb ends in a question mark or exclamation mark, this would then replace the comma. So you wouldn't need to use that. You wouldn't ever put like a question mark and then a comma, that's just wrong. So remember that a question mark and an exclamation mark both have that full stop at the bottom. So it shows they end the sentence. So who goes there, shouted the troll, and you can see our punctuation comes before our speech marks get closed. So when the direct speech follows the verb, the comma has to be used after the verb to show that the speech is about to begin. So let's have a look at that. It sounds a bit complicated, but actually it's not. So in this case, we've got the sort of describing bit of the sentence first and the speech is second. So in this case, we've got our full stop at the end. You can see again, it comes before the speech mark closes, but it shows that the sentence is over. But we also would do the smallest belly goat graph said, I'll go first. And that's just to show that we're stopping the description and we're starting the speaking. So it separates it. So before, if you've got speech at the end of a sentence, you need to pop your comma in there.
Again, the troll shouted, who goes there? And you can see that's really natural because there's a pause in there as well. So uh, just like I said before, because these come at the end of the sentence, we need to have a piece of punctuation that can finish our sentence. So in this case, a comma wouldn't do because it's the last piece of punctuation we have. It needs to be a full stop, a question mark or an exclamation mark. Sometimes you will find sentences where the speech is split and the description is in the middle. So I'm light and quiet, said the smallest billy goat gruff, so I'll go first. So we can see that the bits he said, he said is I'm light and quiet and so I'll go first. But we've got this kind of description of what's happening in the middle. So because the sentence is broken up, we use two commas, almost just like a parenthesis, to show that is in there. Remembering that the punctuation always, always, always has to come before we close the speech marks. So always before we close the speech marks. I'm light and quiet, comma, speech marks close, said the smallest billy goat gruff, comma, to show that they're starting to speak again. And you'll see there's a full stop there to end our sentence before we close our speech mark. Um, if the sentence is keeping going, like this one, it's all part of one sentence that he's speaking, we don't need a new capital letter. So if the, spe if the speech is two separate sentences, separated by the information in the middle, um, you need a comma, a question mark, or an exclamation mark to end the first um, piece of speech. So you're right, agreed the biggest billy goat gruff. We can't let the troll beat us. So this is like a new sentence, but because he paused here, you would pop your comma in. And then another rule is, this is a really important one, and it's one that I've noticed most people are not doing um, if they're using speech in pieces of writing. Whenever somebody different speaks, you need to start a new line. That doesn't mean skip a line, it just means go directly on to the next line. So we can't let him win, he's just a grumpy troll, said the smallest billy goat graph. Next page, you're right, agreed the biggest billy goat gruff. And the medium sized billy goat gruff said, so what shall we do? So you can see that we started here, smallest billy goat gruff, biggest, medium sized, new line for each person who is speaking. So these things are called reporting clauses and basically that's just the description -y bit of the sentence. So um, who goes there shouted the troll. So you can see that that is the reporting clause. Don't need to worry about that name. It's just the bit that sort of explains how it was said and who said it. So have a look at this sentence. It's get off my bridge and the goat said no. Technically the answer, the example's correct, it's technically okay, but can you make it better? So it says here two minutes, but I just want you to pause, have a go at making it better, and then come back when you're done. So let's have a look now. So the troll said, get off my bridge, and the goat said no. So you could use the, the rule, new speaker, new line, because the troll said, get off my bridge, and then the goat said no, so you would put them on two lines, like this. The troll said, get off my bridge. No, said the goat. So you can see that looks a lot neater than just this kind of like guzzle here. Or, and we can also use reported speech instead of direct speech. We could say the, go the troll told the goat to get off his bridge, but the goat refused. So that would take the speech marks out altogether. But this is more correct for what we're doing today. So that gives a bit of a summary of the rules I've already talked through. Now, this part here you might find a bit confusing just because of the way it's worded, but I've talked through everything and explained it. But if you want to come back to this slide just to remind yourself of anything, that is fine. But the really important things I want you to remember is that if you're using speech marks, you have to open and close them around the bits that are said. Your punctuation always has to be inside of your speech marks. And if um, somebody else is speaking, you take a new line. The last thing is, if you choose to use a single speech mark or inverted comma, you have to use that through your whole story, text, whatever it is. Um, or if you choose to use a double, you have to use that as well. But for today, I would prefer you to use a double. So our final thing is just to talk about how we would draw out our speech marks when we are writing, not on the computer. So you can see here I've got a sentence, no, cried the boy. The bit that the boy said is this no part of the sentence. So I would just put two slightly tilted lines just like that around my word no, cried the boy. If I was using one, it would look like that. Now you can do a little 66 and 99 if you want like that but you can see I think that looks really really quite messy and what tends to happen is people do this and you end up with like massive bits of punctuation so I prefer if you would just stick 
to those two little dashes, just like the same that it looks on the computer, just like that. No, cried the boy, and you'll notice I put my punctuation, closed my speech mark after my exclamation mark there. 